Welcome to another video. I am the Starman, and in this video, I want to tell you about the Perseid Meteor Shower. We've actually got the Perseid Meteor Shower peaking this week, so basically, you've got a great chance of seeing a load of shooting stars in the sky anytime this week and into next week. But the peak, which is when you're most likely to see them, is going to happen on Friday night into Saturday morning, probably past midnight I'd say into Saturday morning is going to be the peak time. The Perseid meteor shower lasts for around about five weeks of the year and it's when the earth goes around the sun and it encounters a dust trail left by a comet. It's a 130 year period comet called Swift Tuttle that left a dust trail and as the earth moves into it we go into like a dust cloud, we go into the dust cloud and we're more likely to see things shooting across the sky little tiny grains of sand that's really what meteors are or shooting stars as you might know them as that's all they are and it happens regularly every year this this one there's other meteor showers as well this happens to probably be the most popular one because it happens in the summer although there is a slightly better meteor shower in the winter that's called the Geminis I think it's a better meteor shower but the only thing is it's in the middle of winter and it's not really ideal you don't want to be stuck outside for hours looking up into space in the middle of winter do you but anyway the Perseus is a really good meteor shower and it's worth going out this week and looking up when it gets dark and that would be from about 11 o'clock at night so it's fairly late at night you know by the time it gets sort of dark enough to be able to see them unfortunately this time it does coincide with a full moon so unfortunately the, the full moon is going to wash out quite a lot of the sky so it's going to get in the way of seeing a lot of the the fainter meteors so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to block the moon out and look towards a particular direction so i've got stellarium on here and i fast forwarded it to 10 o'clock can you see here 10 o'clock on it shows you the time down here in the right hand side i'll put a link to this by the way in the description this is the web version you can just go on this free of charge it doesn't cost you anything you can also get the app on your phone as well so what we need to do is we need to probably look towards the northern and western part of the sky. We're looking towards the north here. Now the radiant for these meteors is in the constellation of Perseus and that's why they're called the Perseids because they come from the direction of the constellation of Perseus. I'll show you that in a minute. It doesn't mean they come from the constellation. It just so happens to be that that's the constellation from where the meteors come from as the direction of the earth sort of travels that way. So I'm going to show you that. So if I put down here, if I fast forward this time now, we can do that just by, oh, let's see some planets there. Can you see over there we've got the moon? Look, see, the moon is rising towards the sort of southeast there. Can you see? And that's what I mean. It's going to be a bit of a pain. It's going to light up the sky. But what I'm going to do now is I'll put the constellation lines on. And we can now see, if we look towards the sort of north, north, northeast there. Can you see Perseus? One way to find it is that if you see the W, can you see this W here, the W of Cassiopeia, quite a recognisable constellation that Cassiopeia and that's above Perseus and, and once you see it you can't miss it, it looks a bit like a, a bit like a giraffe there doesn't it and this is where the actual Perseid meteors come from, this is the direction where they come from and we're now almost up to 11 o'clock, if I fast forward it on a bit more Let's fast forward it to about half past 11 and by the, by, it get, by the time it gets to half past 11 we're pretty much at peak dark, you know the sun is low enough so that the sky is as dark as it's going to be but the only problem is, is that obviously we do have the moon right, it doesn't rise that high, it only gets to about 20 degrees which is fairly low actually so it's not too bad, we might just get away with this and we might just be able to see some of the brighter meteors, we're looking for the fireball ones, we're going to miss some of the fainter ones. Now. If you were to look out and you were to look towards, say, I would not look directly towards the radiant because you're looking into the shower. What I would probably do is, seeing as the moon is towards the south, can you see it's towards the southeast there? What I would do is I would pick a part of the sky. I would probably pick, look towards the plough. Can you see that? We're looking towards the north, northwest there. What I would do is I would pick that part of the sky and I would look towards the plough. You can look towards the west, it doesn't really matter where you look as long as you're looking away from the moon and it'll give you more chance 
of seeing Perseid meteors. Now you might even be lucky and see a bright fireball because I've seen quite a few of those bright fireballs. They're absolutely amazing. And look out any day this week you get a chance and into next week as well. If you miss the peak on Friday night into Saturday morning, if you miss that it doesn't matter because hopefully we'll have some good weather going into next week and you might even see some. You might even see a random meteor. Now the way to trace a Perseid meteor is say, say if you were looking towards the west here and you saw a meteor flying across the sky and it went down towards the west and if you traced the arc of where it came from and it came from the direction of Perseus then you know then that that was a Perseid meteor but if say you saw a meteor going like that across the sky across Perseus across the constellation then that must be a random meteor not part of the Perseid meteor shower. That's just a clue as to how you can tell if the Perseids or not. So this is what I would do. I would go out on Friday evening and hopefully if you can stay out for a couple of hours, maybe join a, a group of people. I'm going to a star party with my club, yeah. So we're going up to the bottom of Morecambe Bay and we're going to be looking for and seeing if we can see some of these meteors up there and hopefully the moon will be blocked by some trees behind us yeah so we'll be having a great view of the northern part of the sky that's where I would probably look I would look towards the northwest look towards Ursa Major and this would probably give you the best chance try and get away from street lights get away from street lights go to a park go to somewhere that has a great view of the northern part of the sky and it doesn't have any street lights or anything like that can get in the way try and block the moon out keep the moon behind you that will make a big difference and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you now how to set your camera up so that you can take pictures of these meteors and see if you can capture any of these meteors and if you don't capture them you might capture some star trails and uh, that would make a nice picture as well. So I'm just going to go outside now and I'll show you how you can capture these meteors. Okay, so I'm now out in the garden and I've got this camera here. It's a very popular model. It's a Canon 1200D and I'm just going to show you how I would set this up to see if I can capture some of these meteors. Right, okay, so here we are. I've got this camera set up now and I just want to show you how I would set this camera up. Now I know there's a lot of other different cameras out there but this type of camera I'm using here happens to be the most popular. Most people will probably have a camera like this one. Like I said, it's a Canon 1200D, this one. It's a very basic digital SLR camera. So a lot of people will probably have a similar camera to this one. So on, on the top here, the first thing we want to do is to turn this dial here. So it's on the M. Can you see that? So that's on the M for manual. Yeah. And the next thing we probably want to do, what I would do, is I would turn the lens from AF to MF. Can you see that there? And um, MF means manual focus. Yeah? So that's what I'd do straight away. And then what I would do is, yeah, I hope you can see this. You see the lens here? This is an 18 to 55 millimeter lens. Can you see? 18 to 55. Now the lens extends when you go to telephoto. What we want to do is we want to bring that all the way back to 18. So it's at its widest. That's what we want. We want the widest field of view we can get. So there you are. We've got the lens of the widest field of view. Now let's have a look at the settings. Right, okay. So we're now looking at the back of the camera now and we've got the screen here and look at all these numbers here what the hell is going on here well i'm going to try and help you with what all these mean firstly we've got the m there that means the mode it's in manual mode the next number here 1125 that's the shutter speed it's set to at the moment this number here is the aperture that's the little iris thing inside the lens that closes and opens we're going to move that in a minute and here we've got the iso so what we want to do first is we want to make sure the shutter speed, can you see here the shutter speed is a few seconds long. So I'll say about 10 to 15 seconds maybe. Something like 15 seconds is a decent shutter speed for shooting the stars. 
And then what we need to do is we need to move this aperture so that the number is as low as possible. And I do that by holding down this button here and turning the wheel. Can you see how that number comes down? It depends on what lens you're using, how low that number goes. If you're using a fairly fast lens, that will go down to f2.8 or lower. This one only goes down to f3.5, which is fairly slow. The lower the number, the faster the lens is, the more light comes into your lens. So the lower the number, the better. So this one goes down to f3.5, and that's what we want to have this on for capturing meteors. The next thing we need to do is change the ISO because we want the ISO to be fairly high because it needs to be sensitive. So what I do is I press the ISO button there and that brings up this and we can go up to about 6400. I won't, I won't go up that far. I'd probably go to about 16 or 32. Yeah? 1600. I'd probably push it to 3200 with this lens, to be honest. If you have a faster lens, you could probably go to 16. You could get away with less. But we'll go to 3200. So we now have 15 seconds at f3.5, ISO 3200. This will give us a great chance, a great exposure to have a chance of capturing these meteors because they do move very fast across the sky and you need to have your camera set to a high sensitivity, a high ISO in order to be able to capture them. Unless you're lucky enough to capture a fireball, that is, because you could capture those at any setting. Okay, now one more thing. I want to show you how to focus the lens because that is very important because we're in manual focus, aren't we? So I need to show you how to focus a lens. So if I just show you the front of the camera here, can you see we've got the lens there? You normally have the focusing ring right on the end. You want to get hold of that. You want to make sure your camera's pointed towards something in the distance say about 30 feet or more away and that should be good enough focus on um i know it's going to be dark so you might need to focus on a street light that's in the distance i'm pointing the camera at an aerial next door neighbor's aerial there so if we zoom into this screen now and if i just show you this now if i take that lens now and i start to turn it can you see how that's coming into focus now i've got that chimney coming into focus there can you see that yeah so we've got this chimney here and we can see those aerials there. They are now in focus now. So if I, if I turn that ring, can you see the go out there? So anything about 30 feet or more away at this focal length should be good enough. As long as it's about 30 feet or more away, it should be good enough for this lens, for the wide lens. And there you are, I've now got it in focus and the camera is now set up to capture meteors. Okay, so that's how to set the camera up for meteors. The only thing you need to do then is maybe use like a cable release and keep taking pictures one after the other. If you can leave the remote thing held down, that's even better. Just leave the, plug a cable release into the camera and just leave it locked on and it'll just keep taking picture after picture after picture. And if you leave it pointing towards the sky, you never know if a meteor goes flying past or even a fireball, you might just capture a really spectacular picture anyway there you go i hope you like this video and hope it's been a bit of a help to you i'll see if i can do some more on the night itself capturing the Perseids on the friday if the moon doesn't get in the way anyway i hope you like this video if you do hit the like button and also hit subscribe and tick the bell for notifications of new videos and i will see you again on the next one